<laughs> okay, whenever you guys are ready. All right, go. Bow, 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 bow. You are listening to IRL Radio. Radio. In real life. In real life. You're here live with Neep Shulman. IRL Radio. The River. <laughs> <laughs> the river. The river. Yeah. Well, that's it. I guess I don't need to introduce the show. I'm Neve. This is IRL. And I'm sitting here with uh, two of my oldest friends in the world. I'm 95. And, and I'm 104. Wow. Yeah. I look good. You guys look great. <laughs> Thank you. It's Josh and Benny Safty, mm-hmm. filmmaker, friends, yep. brothers, yep. clearly. Although I guess... Not necessarily. Not to the radio. I yeah. don't know. Maybe if we, if maybe voice wise, I actually brothers, think people would. They would be able to know. We do a lot of uh, conference calling, and it, and and every once in a right. while, the person chimes in. Hey, can you guys identify, identify yourself? Yeah. Because we can't tell the difference between. <laughs> We're going to pause now for some station identification. <laughs> the river. Oh, IRL. 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 Ba, 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 ba. IRL. IRL. But IRL. you guys, we should pause for brother identification. Okay, sorry. Okay. This is Josh Safty on the microphone that you cannot see. And and this is uh, Benny, Benny here on the on the microphone. Do you guys think you sound alike? I don't. I can hear the difference. Well, you have a brother. Do you, you guys sound very? Different. I think we sound. I think we sound pretty similar to other people who don't know. I also think we don't look alike. That's the other thing. Which people you don't tell think me you I, look alike? No. People think we do, but I don't think so. And they do everything exactly the same together. How old are they? They're in their thirties. Okay. And they even share a boyfriend. Wow. They they date a guy who is a twin himself. But because they both want to have the exact same thing, they 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 want to each oh have God. the same boyfriend, so they wow. share one. I mean, there's they, a, there's a Tales crazy. from the Crypt episode with James with um, Joe Pesci, and they end up two really? two twins end up falling in love with him, and oh, he doesn't yeah. know which one to pick, so they end up cutting him in <laughs> half. Wow, it's a great episode. Joe Pesci. Joe yeah, Pesci. Yeah. It's That's it's amazing. Great, it's a great episode. Look it up. Get it on uh, DVD on the or, internet. On the internet. It's on the internet. It's probably type in Joe Pesci. Internet. Tales from the Crypt. The twin. Episode. What happened to Joe Pesci? Joe Pesci. Where is he now? Uh, He's in the hospital. He keeps burning his head. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's still serving his time for the Sticky Bandits yeah. uh, <laughs> debacle. Yeah. Joe Pesci is on. Yeah, he's in like actor pur- actor purgatory. Like he's kind of. What? But why? I he, think because he kind of was playing he, himself for too long and maybe. Or playing a version of himself. Casino was the last <sighs> great thing that I remember him in. Amazing. Yeah, which he was incredible in. But uh, So good. My Cousin Vinny, I'm, I still... Oh, no, wait. You know what else he did? He did that movie with Brendan Fraser. Yeah, uh, what, Encino uh, Man? No, 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 where he plays a bum living in the oh, library. Oh, with honors. That's a, with no, honors. With honors. Oh. Yeah, with right. Honors. That was sort of But that was 1993. Hurrah. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget. Yes. No, Lest not we ever. forget <laughs> with honors. Directed by, well, I won't get into it. Mm-hmm. Directed uh, by who? I think, I think Alec Kasheshian. I don't know who that is. Doesn't matter. I mean, it does. He's great. T- terrific director. Um, anyway, the reason we're talking about movies, I think, instinctively or maybe just naturally the, how we got to that was because you guys are filmmakers yes and uh part of the reason i wanted to have you on the show is because you've got a movie coming out mm-hmm. or it's sort of just well just it's in the festival circuit now no it's it's just played south by southwest so it's been playing at the, the venice film festival Toronto but it hasn't been somewhere. released yeah radius weinstein company's releasing it in what we think is probably going to be june Okay. It'll, it'll most likely be June, and right now you'll you can see the trailer. It's tied yes. to uh, it's online. That's right. I actually tweeted the trailer recently because it's, it's so intense. It's an it's it's an its own experience, and <laughs> actually, strangely enough, the uh, a, a a kid who we kn- knew in high school, mm-hmm. David Gelb, That's who right. made Zero Dreams of Sushi, and most recently, the Blumhouse film The Lazarus Effect. He has a a pretty wild. He uh, made that. Well, he had the Lazarus effect. Yeah, he directed that. Whoa! And wasn't that wild? <laughs> Everyone, one of the right. reviews said, uh, it's a "Weird career jump to go from sushi to yeah. reviving people for, on the table." But I, they I do think serve the sushi on bodies. Like, exactly. Yeah. And in also, some it's the bodies are served raw in that film. That's right. like the tagline. That's right. So I think that was a sure. No, no but perhaps, Gelb, perhaps. Gelb has a really awesome trailer company. That's and right. It's called City Room Creative, and a lot, a lot of studios use him. And he sure. ended up being hired to do this movie. And he, the coincidences were, were kind of strange. But he did an amazing. I mean, does he, he uh, does he pay you to talk about him? Uh, <laughs> I 
get I get, I get twenty five cents uh, really every thousand dollars. Plugging that he makes. David Gelb hard. Uh, David uh, Gelb. <laughs> Actually, there was uh, at the opera. Well, we don't want really to talk about it. But uh, he, well, I think if we're gonna tell a story about David Gelb, <laughs> I know the one we should tell. The 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 car crash. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, because this is what's interesting. So. You, you know, if you're listening now, I'm talking to um, Josh and Ben Safdie, and, and Josh and I met in kindergarten, mm -hmm. and over the course of our lives since then, the last 25 years, we've had a lot of things happen to us, um, and our friendship has been strong and weak and grown and, and it's, you know, transformed and changed, um, but uh, when we were sort of maybe uh, in high school, senior mm -hmm. year, at, at se summer after senior year of yeah. high school, <clears throat> we were really good friends, and you were also going to a different high school, and you had your best friend at your high school, which mm -hmm. was David Gelb, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's yeah. accurate. And we were all out in the Hamptons Blah. for the summer, and well, we, we went were there. Out. It was like a what was it? It was like a night out that David came. It was a weird night out. I think I don't really remember. I think it was a weekend though. It was yeah, it was, it was a Saturday weekend. night. Yeah. I think if I remember, and. That was the first summer I was driving, and I don't know why, but I was I had somehow convinced my dad to let me use his really cool nineteen like eighty two or eighty four Porsche <laughs> Targa to go out and to drive occasionally, and it's really unbelievable to me that he let me take. I don't understand. I mean, it was it was old enough to not be so precious with it. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, it wasn't like a super fancy car, but exactly. it was it was a cool car. It was very cool. Um, Rest but in I, peace. I loved cars. Spoiler and so alert. I was, and I was a great driver. Anyway, spoiler alert. Do you remember when we stole? <laughs> we crashed it. Remember when we used to go around? Remember when we used to go around stealing cars? Well, no. But hold on a second. <laughs> so we went out that night. We we snuck. We we managed to sort of. We were we were such little knuckleheads. We yeah. but we somehow managed to get our way into a party. Mm -hmm. And I think we maybe it was so expensive. I like to buy drinks at those clubs. Like I think I had a glass of champagne or something that I got from someone's table. Like yeah. I, I didn't, I couldn't you didn't even pay afford, for it. No, <laughs> I didn't pay for it. And I uh, couldn't get drinks from the bar. I was like, obviously not old enough. And, um, and then we went out after that to a diner. We had food. We laughed. I remember having a lot of fun. And by the time we got on the road to go home, it was like f almost four in the morning. Yeah. And we were in this little Porsche, and David Gill was in the back seat, <laughs> which is not even really a seat. Just and you, from, you right. were just talking about this the other yeah, day. Yeah, you were in the front next to me. And we were tired. I was not drunk, but like I had had a glass or two of champagne. And you put on i think there oh, were no. a couple what, tapes what, in the car I really, lullabies no. <laughs> what happened was is i noticed when we immediately pulled out of the right. diner it wasn't even it was instinctual you immediately started nodding i off. was tired you were tired i was, so tired. I was like, all right we need to put the music and at on. my time right. at the time my you girlfriend, were tired too though yes at the time and my girlfriend was living in italy and that's she right. was ahead of me and and uh i think this was like it's like with my first cell phone, so I was getting like texts sure. or something, or I don't remember how I was in, in communication with her. Right, and I remember be, drafting a text message or something uh -huh. to her, and noticing that you were kind of swerving. And I looked at you and I said, "Neva, are you all right?" I and remember I, you asked me that. You're like, "I'm fine." I was like, "Do not." I said, "Do not fall asleep." And you're like, "I'll be fine." I was like, "Well, let's put on some music." I right. have the, so I have the I, song. <laughs> you have the yeah. song, and I. This isn't the song. This is what this is what you thought. <laughs> no. Well, it may, it's actually, it may oh, have wait. well, it may this as well have been this. Wait, hold on, I gotta go to the. He's playing. Well, you're gonna put us asleep. Yes, thank no, you, Ben. The, the, actually, <laughs> the song it was Bob Dylan. Right. So, so, it was a Bob so Dylan Josh says, "Are you are you good?" And I'm and I'm fighting exhaustion. But, but the drive home was, like, short. It was, like, 15 minutes or something. And I'm on this one little, you know, quiet road. It's not like I'm on the highway or anything. And I'm like, I'll be fine. You know, I've got a 10 or 15-minute drive. Like, it's cool. <laughs> and I think I even remember saying to you, like, you just need to stay up with me. <laughs> like, we just keep, like, you need to talk. And you're like, okay, cool. Let's put out some music. So, and you put on a Bob Dylan tape. <laughs> A tape, mind you, and no one. And people listening probably don't even know what those it are. It was uh, what? What tape was it? It was the the. Um, oh, was it the concert tape? No, it was. Uh, it doesn't matter. It was a droning, <laughs> like whiny. I mean, look, I love Bob Dylan now, <laughs> but it's still it's not like high energy music. It wasn't music. the type of high. It was no. the only tape your dad had in the car. 
<laughs> anyway, so within moments, I think you fell asleep. I fell asleep in mid-text Ga- message. Gal- <laughs> David fell asleep in the back. Yes, yeah. And so then it's just me on my own in this little car, like, <laughs> trying to keep my eyes open. And I remember one or one or two times, like, my eyes closed for a second. I was like, oh, my God. Okay, wait, I'm so close. Just a couple more miles down the road. I was like, I can do this. I can do this. Right. And the next thing I know... <laughs> I hear the sound of like crunching metal. I wasn't going fast. I mean, I was being responsible, but I hear the sound of like crunching metal. I open my eyes and I see that I'm on the opposite side of the road now. And with and oncoming traffic. I, there was, unfortunately, it was late and there was yes. not a lot of oncoming traffic. But it immediately, without even thinking, in the most like animalistic, just sort of raw human form possible i let out this like blood curdling <laughs> scream because i think my life is this could be it my, yeah. this is it's like screaming for your life <laughs> i'll say that i woke up to guttural screaming and seeing right. a firework of sparks emanating <laughs> right. from the front left of the car realizing realizing there's no wheels in the car anymore and right. i scream, wow. <laughs> and i'm screaming and then david wakes up to two people screaming, screaming. <laughs> so he just starts joining in yeah. with the screaming and we don't know what's going on, and you magically actually were able to. Well, I very quickly, you know, having had a nice nap, I come to fresh, <laughs> and and I I get my wits about me. I see that my brake pedal is not working, and because there's no time because well, the front wheel is gone, <laughs> yeah. and 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 I see that there's some grass on the shoulder, so I pull off to the left, and I put the I push in the clutch, which is natural instinct, and I pull the e brake, which did work. Mm-hmm. Um, and slowed us down reasonably But quickly. we, like, dug a little graveyard in the grass. I remember there was, like... There was, right. We made a little bit of a ditch yeah. or a, a, a trench or something. Anyway, so that's the story. No, but then the cops were immediately they there. Were they, there were, so they were following us. Weird. I, I, they were following us, and they said that they were watching you swerve back and forth, but which they was out up. of their di- jurisdiction. They weren't allowed to actually flag us down. So it was because of bureaucr- yeah. a bureaucratic, ridiculous rule, they almost let us right. die she so should they, have pulled us over and i immediately said to you right here I know. throw some pennies in you your said mouth. put a penny in your mouth because apparently you had heard that a copper penny can like help <laughs> di- like it's a base and it gets rid of the acids of uh right. of it, it confuses the breathalyzer room. test who knows but our, our audio engineer is nodding like he may have heard that trick too <laughs> so he's giving a thumbs up actually. yeah <laughs> drink and drive guys just carry <laughs> pennies just keep lots of pennies a roll of pennies yeah a roll of pennies no in but your I, best to pie. be fair i was not drunk no though. it was just <clears> exhaustive. but i did remember watching you take that breathalyzer and oh thinking, man i yeah but oh, i'm boy. glad i did yeah because that got me off the hook for the most part like that made my yeah, you're just, I fell asleep story legit because if otherwise everyone would have been yeah, like you were just an irresponsible right. driver fell asleep right <laughs> well and since then I've been really like you are one of the best drivers I know well that's let's a, take that's let's true. take a second here because anybody who drives a lot which is I do like will tell you that you I can fall asleep. it's easy to get tired falling driving and uh, it took me a while to learn to do this but like now if I'm really tired like I'll just I'll stop I'll pull over and I'll take a little nap Our dad, actually, the first time I ever drove, I was 15 years old, and our dad had this, like, crappy old Chevy Chevy Blazer, remember, (laughs) that he gave to me without brakes. He's like, here, uh, take it. And then I realized it was one step before he was just, he went through a phase where he would just leave it on random blocks in Bushwick, hoping that people would just burn it. And he ended up getting a ticket, and he ended up having to find a place. But the first time I ever drove, I was in the the car with you there? No, it was just me and him. And he, he, we were on the highway. We were going like fifty, and we just kept careening into the, the into the highway divider, just what? constantly like, <laughs> and uh, he, he was just falling. Because you were a bad. Oh, he, he, he was, was driving, and I had <laughs> never driven before. So oh he said, God. he said, I said, let's pull over and go. He was like, no, we got to keep going. You got to drive. I had never driven before, and he, I, we pull over on the side of the highway, and he's like, all right, just go you know 50 miles per hour and just stay in the the right lane really the slow lane and i was like all right so he for the first about three minutes he was up and like making sure that and then i look over at him he's passed out he's just sleeping against the oh window my God. we couldn't take a break i don't know why he just didn't take a break but you did it i did it and i learned how to drive that's the the best time that's how you do it learning you learn <clears throat> trial in, by fire in clutch clutch right. moments that's right but there was no it was an automatic blazer. it was an automatic right. yeah <laughs> i mean uh the one time, remember that time actually for the pleasure of being robbed when I was my first film. Your friend who had like nine cars oh, and four God. motorcycles on that street because he whatever Bennett Bennett. He, and then we were going. Oh, use I thought his, you were going to tell a different story. No, no we, I want to hear that story, but we he, we were going to use his rabbit in our film oh, because yeah. he had the skull locks and it was this beautiful car. And he's like, "All right, I'm going to give you a little tutorial." And I brought right. a Leonor 
in the movie she has to drive, so I was going to teach her stick. Right. I barely knew stick. So I'm thinking, all right, worst comes to worst, just work the clutch, not realizing right. you can't do that. And I ended up, he was following me on his motorcycle, and then I just see him in the rearview mirror just manically, like, waving his hand, like, pull over, pull over. Right. And I pull over, and he comes up to the, the driver's side window, and he goes, you're riding my clutch. You ruined my car. Right. And then we pull over, and the clutch was completely gone, and we had to pay for the right. new clutch. And yeah, the I remember the headache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the Bennett story? I know. I thought you were going to tell a stiff, the stiff story about when you're that guy in that movie that you made crash my Volvo. Um, Remember <laughs> down in the maid packing district? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not, let's not. We told enough cra- car crash stories for one day. Forgot well, about car that. talk went off the air. I forgot. So. No, did it? I think yeah. So now this is no. I was just listening to click and clack the other day. It's, it's going. It's going. It's going off the air. So we can. Take is it space. really? Don't, yes, it is. Because if you if it's seriously going off the it air, it is definitely going off the air. But wow. I'm sure they're playing rerun, but they're. It's, oh man, it's going off I, the air. So. Love those guys. <clears throat> so, all right, let's get back to talking about other things. Well, the show is in real life, IRL. That's right. Should we, just... we take a? Should we do a station identification? Ba, 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 bum. Ba, 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 bum. You're listening to IRL, the River. Life. Thanks for listening, and welcome back. <laughs> Uh, we're going to transition now into the second segment of our show, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about friendship. Okay. What do you guys know about that? Huh. Friendship. Um, what do I know about friendship? I know that uh, I look to friends to help me keep myself distracted. I mean, mm. I, I, lately I've been veering towards being alone. I what about, yeah, so what relationships you just maybe. Need yeah. one. You just that's, need one friend. <laughs> that's, that's what I, every once in a while. Yeah, you don't. You don't. It's like if you have a lot of friends. Right. It's a little strange sometimes. So Some have, people can do it though. I know. I. It's, but what, what is a friend? I'm well, a friend they, is. For, for example, well, that's a good question. The people at Twitter, they have a little number next to everybody's computer. It's like 120 something. That's hold on. Thing. What do you when you say people at Twitter? The people who work at Twitter. <laughs> oh, okay. They have a number next to the computer that says you 121, and that's the maximum number of people. Maybe it's more different, give or take a couple. Of people. Okay. It's the maximum number of people you can have a close relationship with that really? you can remember. The people at Twitter said this? Well, this is like a mental <clears throat> fact that the brain can only handle so many people. So, I don't know. That's just that's just to throw that out there. You can only know 100. What does Twitter people. have to do with this? Yeah, Twitter, their whole idea is we want, we want to destroy <laughs> that number is their idea. Oh, oh so, so they're, they're saying like, like yeah, crush. Exactly. We can crush, crush the that. Stereotype. You can know millions of people, which right. isn't true. but. You can interact with that many people, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's like the cl- the more. Yeah, the more you, I've gotten older, the more it's kind of you kind of sift down into like the right. the core, like panning for gold. Yeah, you can start with a handful, yes. a lot, a big pile of stuff, but like as your life goes on, you want to slowly eliminate the sort of dirt. I can't hang out with more than and just get two people at a time. I get really overwhelmed by it, so I need to. I'm a one on one type person, and. uh you know, uh, <clears throat> what is a friend? A friend is somebody who you can confide in. A friend is somebody who uh, helps you hustle life for happiness. A friend is um, somebody who you can share secrets with. Uh, a friend is a psychiatrist, a personal psychiatrist, basically. A friend is someone who, a real friend is somebody who you can depend on. And also, right. and a, a real friend is somebody who, if you don't speak to them for a little bit of time, they don't get upset about <laughs> yes. it. Yes. Right. That's I was just waiting for you to say, David Gelb is my friend. <laughs> my, my best friend. David Gelb is my best friend. <laughs> uh, and all of David Gelb is actually a new old. He's a friend who I hadn't see, spoken to. No, I understand. Yeah. And but you picked right back up. Yeah. And now you're working together and yeah. touching. Yes. Penis. <laughs> each other's <laughs> movies and, yes. and projects. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, because that's something that. I'm interested to hear from you guys because you, you, the movies that you make are all about like very intimate relationships and mm-hmm. friendships, and the movie that got coming out, heaven knows what, is very much about like an interesting sort of group of friends, mm-hmm. right? I haven't seen it. But. Street, <laughs> it's yeah, it's about a um a group of street kids who right. basically all they have is is their friend circle and their dramas between. I mean, when you're a when you're basic, I mean, this is very relevant today. Our, our, our friend said that the internet is like the streets of New York City in a weird way. That everybody's really bored. Like people are, people get really bored and they want to excite themselves, so they go on the internet and they try to find this to stimulate. When you're on the street and you don't have all those things, you're actually 
looking to the dramas of life to try to excite you. So you look to your friends for that drama. That's true. Or you're, you, they become enemies. Everything just becomes so operatic. Well, that's one thing that makes you guys interesting, I think, to me and to a lot of other people, is that you find things. You, you guys are always out there looking for interactions and strangers and you know unusual people and situations yeah i believe i want to die have knowing as much as i can about people and uh movies are a really great way to do that because you movies are these weird strange kind of tools to explore how people think and how people feel and and when you're collaborating with you know you know, no no disrespect to professional actors, but when you're collaborating with kind of non-professional actors or first-time actors, it's a very intimate process, and you're getting to know that person on a very deep level. And uh, I find that to be, I don't know, I find it for myself to be very rewarding, and the relationships that I establish, that we establish with the, with the subjects of our movies, be them professional or not, you know, like we just worked on our last film with the you know most professional actor we've yet to work with. This actor, young actor Caleb Landry Jones, and he's still a friend. Right. And um, you know, you just people are people, and uh, you know, I definitely like we just left. We were just downstairs. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what made me think of it. We were just downstairs in the Dunkin' Donuts with Buddy Duress, who plays a character named Mike in the film. And oh, he, I was calling him Mike. Well, he goes by Mike, but he. Oh, that that oh, was an I old see. persona right, of it. his that we were. You called him Michael because that's what people used to call him. Exactly, but he's got trying it. to now live this new life where he's going by his real name, which is Buddy Duress, and uh, hmm. he, you know, that's a lot of people who kind of because he's it's from. Interesting that his last name is Duress, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, because he's in Duress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. always, always. In Duress. Uh, he's in, struggling. Yeah, he just yeah. got out of prison. Like, crazy. Five days ago. Uh, Did you guys ago. really like to sort of? And Ben, I know. I mean, this always sort of struck me a little bit more because Josh, you've always been more like that more interested in sort of fringe kind of you know walking the line but ben you always seem more straight to me like yeah. more straight laced clean cut a little preppier which is you know more more me yeah and yet you you know you're very involved now not just with your brother but in this sort of the world of the weird <laughs> well, like, it's, it, well it's, it's just a matter of um people are people i think josh was saying that before you know if you if you get into a situation, you're going to see what somebody has to offer and what you're going to be able to relate on. So, yes, it was very hard for me to get into that world and to kind of navigate it. But once once you're in there, you're in there. And uh, I think it's just a matter of, yeah, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to lie. It was a very difficult thing, but yeah, no, it's strange. I, it's not like once once you were in, you're in, you know. Right. A, but do you ever think about what you'd be doing if you weren't making films with your brother? Um, well, I was almost a physicist. That's really <laughs> yes. I was studying. Oh, that's a, you should call your first. I was book. almost a physicist. I was, I was almost, almost a physicist. Um, yes. Well, no, I, and then I and then I was actually Josh. That when I was I I like left that school. I didn't like the school, and then I left. Oh, you went to college for physics. For physics, six, yes. And it physics? was um, and then I went. Josh took. He's like, oh, you got to come to this class. It's incredible. It's a film class, and they were showing Italian neorealist film, and I was just like what the hell is this? Like, you can show real life with movies, and it was a very mm. interesting revelation. I mean, similarly, Benny was turning me on to, you know, cosmic evolution, and, yeah. and it's it's all it, physics yeah, in the, the end. Is, You're looking like, at people what, are like what physics. I found, and... What I found most interesting about learning about, like, subatomic particles and the whole standard model was I had to then, part of what I was learning was having to impart that knowledge to other people teach it to them right so i had to then learn okay how can i make this mm. insane it's communication it's yeah. all how can i make this insane stuff make sense to you right and so but i found that process of storytelling more interesting than it <clears throat> it was so yeah it all i'm recently hand hand. i'm realizing well, wait, this recently oh. that that everything in life is about communication and one of the things that i'm actually grateful for twitter for is that it it, it forces you to simplify your th thoughts and like sometimes I'm looking, I'll draft a tweet, right? And it'll be like, it'll be in the red right. and it'll be like negative 263. And I'm like, wow, what am I doing <laughs> That's here? A lot. <laughs> it's just like stream of consciousness. And right. I'll go back and I'll edit it and I'll find that I'm just, I'm deleting all of the kind of, not personality, but I'm deleting all of the, the kind of excess baggage. No, but see, that's part of my concern mm -hmm. with social media and specifically Twitter is like, I want to say something and I've got the English language, which is the only one that I'm capable of employing, mm -hmm. to express myself. And yet, 
like you say all the time i'm editing my words down and i'm using fewer and fewer and shorter and shorter words because i'm i'm limited in how i can communicate which is why i've actually started writing articles and and actually strangely posting more on facebook because there at least i can say something well, and, it, it, and make multiple points on the same idea and not like just promote i feel like twitter is really just this sort of promotional tool it is that's the i, I also look I, I look to twitter for news sources and i well look, sure and but that's like, why feature films quippy yes. are are a good place because i just time. recently it's a lot of time. i just recently heard when i was in south by southwest someone said that f- movies are the new novel which is kind of a sad thought it is a sad thought well, but like even sense. if you look at the last eight years like when we first had my first feature film that very few people saw pleasure being robbed right it came out when it came out, it was you had to have a, a, a website. Everyone had to have a website That's for right. their film, and then the Twitter wasn't around. And then once you would premiere a film at a festival or whatever, South by West, Cannes, Sundance, you'd go on two hours after your premiere, and you'd see fifty or sixty blogs. People were just posting right. Right. paragraphs mm-hmm. about your work. Right now. You go to a festival, you premiere your movie. I mean, the for us, it's a yeah. little bit different because we've had work. But like someone who has a new film, they'll premiere their movie. Back in 2007, there would be 50 or 60 blog posts about their little film, and right. that's really beautiful. Now you're lucky if if 25 people decide to give you 140 characters about your thing because there's no more blogs. Right. Blogs are dying. I mean, you have Tumblr, which is all image based, and you have and you have Instagram, which is also image based, yeah. and you have Twitter is the only language tool that we mass culturally have. And then you have, hopefully, what you have is you have professionals start to rise up and articles become more and more prevalent. But it, when I heard that movies were the new novel, I was thinking, huh, so strange, you know, that that's becoming the new long form sure. entertainment. I'd be curious to know your thoughts, Ben, on the theory of everything. Because it's, it's both, it's both a film I, and it's about. I didn't see it. I didn't uh, see the theory of the universe. Movie, but I could tell you about the universe if you want, but uh, no, I didn't see the. Theory well, yeah, I don't need you to because I saw the theory of everything, <laughs> so I no, think I was, got it. I think I got it. Um, <laughs> you know, there's like actually, a swirl of milk and a cup of coffee. Yeah, I get that. You and, see it, and uh, then it spins. In they the play same stuff direction. in bra- They play stuff backwards, which I get. <laughs> and he he gets very frail, and life is short. I get it. I think I get it. This is uh, the imitation game was with Benedict Cumberbatch. I saw that. Right. The oh, they both wait. What? No, no, no. I'm talking about the theory of everything. <laughs> no, I'm joking around here. Oh. No. Yes, they, they, I was confu- they're confusing because they're, they're both British. Right. And they're both sort of not great films. It, yeah. yeah, well, it's like I, 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 there was a joke. I said, um, Benedict Cumberbatch beat Eddie Redmayne at the imitation game. No, <laughs> other way around. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, that's right. No, Eddie, that's... Red, no, Eddie Redmayne oh, beat Benedict Oh, you're Cumberbatch right. That's imitation. funny. Sorry. That's a good tweet. That, that, yeah, was, a tweet. was a tweet. Oh, that was a tweet. Yeah, yeah, see, that that's was... Oh, okay. See, but, yeah. It's good for jokes. Great for jokes. <laughs> yes, it's great so for it's jokes because perfect, jokes are short form. Perfect. One line. Henny Youngman would kill it. You guys want to hear a joke I just invented that I haven't actually used yet? I have a brand new this joke. Is, wait, wait, wait. Hold Can on. Can we premiere it? Let's, let's do, pause for let, station, no, let's identification. Do station identification. Let's okay. station identification. Go. You are listening to IRL Radio. IRL The River. Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Wait, hold on a second. Wait, let me make sure I get this right. <laughs> Is this part I'm of still the waiting joke? at the door. No, 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 I'm no. waiting at the door. <laughs> hold you on. Wait, wait, let me start over. Is we'll, anybody we'll there? This out. <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. Okay, this is enough. All right, I've been standing here for a little bit. I'm going to go back to my, my, my couch. All right, wait, wait. Let's let you know what I don't have it ready. Okay, well, let's I have, workshop I, it. Let's okay. workshop it. Okay, so what say, is the? All right, so here's here was what happened. So I did a knock knock. Someone's. I then I said orange, and then someone and then I said orange. They say orange, said, orange Jew. Jew, and I was like, oh, that sounds like they're saying Jew. Orange right? Jew. And so then I was thinking, is there a word that orange ends Jew. in J? That's like a negative word. So if when they say orange Jew, it sounds like they're saying something like dirty Jew, and then you can just like excuse. But did, did you call me? Like I want to make it an aggressive. So it's not okay. orange. No, because orange is not an insult. Okay, Orin. You could think of the name Orin. No, but it has to end in j. Okay, so here, here, say ready? Okay. (laughs) Orin j. Are you knocking instead of actually? Yeah. Who's there? (laughs) Dirty j. No, it doesn't work. (laughs) (laughs) No, dirty orange juice. No, say it. Come on. Dirty orange (laughs) juice. No, no. No, just dirty Dirty orange. Dirty orange juice. No, no. Okay, so so it's knock, knock. Who's there? Dirty orange. Dirty orange juice. 
Excuse me. Dirty orange shoe. What about what about Florida? What about dirty? What about what about no? What about dirty J? Dirty J. Dirty J. Is now the time? Who? Maybe now. That's what you say, dirty J. Because that doesn't sound like a word until it goes on there. Because that's a very valid. If someone, if you knocked on my door and said, "Hey, dirty J," I'd be like, "Dirty J, who?" This this might be this might be this might be. That's it. That's it. Hold on. Already? Okay. Hello, who's there? Dirty J. Dirty J, who? Excuse me? <laughs> there, uh, Dirtage. Did Dirtage. you just call me a dirty Jew? I'm so sorry. My name is Dirtage. <laughs> Dirtage. <laughs> German. I am from northern Germany. Dirtage. With a wrong Dirtage. accent. Dirtage, relax. He meant, he meant something else. Right? What did you mean when you said dirty Jew? Oh, I thought your last name was Chu. Oh, you were asking me yeah. my last name. Yes. My last name is Jew. Oh, <laughs> it. It's my name is Dirty Jew. Um, well, this actually it might, now might be a good time to Please. release my. I have I have a joke that I want to catch on. Okay, Should let's I do, do it. it. Should I say Go it? for it. Okay, this is a joke I want to catch on. Mm-hmm. I want it to be imparted to the world. Plus, this will uh, this will officially sort of copyright it as yours. No, but I don't. Well, this is the thing is I don't. Oh, want you don't it want to be ownership. Mine, he I want wants it to be people, in the mainstream. But I want Set other people to know it. Well, no, but it'd be nice just to have some rec- yeah, record. Yeah, so, so that so right. you, for example, could be like, oh my god, no, no, yeah, exactly. Dirtage, dirtage, you. So dirtage, you could um, <laughs> that um, dirtage, you could have the uh, ability to say, oh yeah, I know the guy that created Great. it. And somebody be like, oh, you're fucking crazy. No, and that, can my say, grandfather no, no. said that. Right. You know. But you'll say, no, I right, so swear. give us the joke. Okay, so here it is. You're sitting at a table. There's six or seven people around. Okay. It's a big dinner, all right? You've all are decided to share the meal. Hold on. Are you telling that you're I'm setting up situation, the situation, situation where you, you tell the, the joke? joke? Okay, I thought, well, I wasn't okay. sure if we were getting the joke. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. It could be. It could be. So there's six or seven people. You decide to share the meal. You're going to split the check. Got all it. Right? So the, the time comes. Check's put out on the table. This is where you, this is where you take... <laughs> You, the joke teller, need to take take charge. You take the check and you grab it. Your job is to add up what everybody ate. Right. As you're looking at the check, you're like, all right, that looks good, that looks good. And you go, whoa, 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 whoa. To the waiter? To, to the, everybody to at everybody. the table. Because now okay. everybody's like, okay, how much do I got to put in? Right. How much do I got to put they're in? Waiting, they're looking to you. Yeah, and you're right. like, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I, who ordered the subtotal? Because... <laughs> <laughs> Whoever ordered the subtotal has got to put in more. Right. That's Here's ex- the best part of this excessive. joke: that Benny's been constantly. I trying think I heard you try this. Benny's before. tried putting this on for this has been years of every time we order something, and sometimes people are taking us out to dinner, and he's like, "Well, let me take a look at that for a second. So he tells this the, the, one of the people who runs Radius, releasing our movie, says his name is Jason Janago. He goes up to him and goes, "Hey, Jason, listen." I have this joke I'm trying to get people to, <laughs> to, to kind of spread. And he goes, oh, what is it? So Pennington tells him exactly what he just told us. And he's looking at him. He looks at the crowd. He's like, oh, I think I'll try that later. Yeah. And he, like, took everybody out from the Citizen yeah, Four no. dinner. And then he, I think. He said he was going to text me to see how it right. went. But did he ever but, text you? No, he did not text me. Jason. But, yes, yeah, so if, you, if you try that and you get a chuckle. That's all. It's all you want. I actually right. speaking with Buddy. Finding little ways to make people laugh. Yeah, any little chance chance. Oh, it's, it's all. It's all whoa, matters. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Buddy, <laughs> buddy. It sounds like a food. Uh, yeah, of course. The, 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 the sub. Who ordered the sub? Yeah. Who ordered? Who ordered the? Who ordered the total sandwich? Who ordered? Who got the sub total? It's yeah. crazy. It thinks yeah. one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Uh, that's an expensive meal. I know, it's insane. <clears throat> so, I, I was actually just talking with, with Buddy yesterday because this girl, when the first time he did prison, this girl, her, her mom forced her to press charges against him for rape. And it's one of these situations where it actually does a disservice to women who are, you know, most of the time, whatever. So, and then she ended up pulling the charges off because it wasn't real. So he hates her, and her name is Erica Blauberg. Right, jeez, and because uh, she ruined his life almost, she put him in jail for two years, and then like she's like, oh, never mind. So it's not on his record, and that's fine. But he still did those two yeah. years. Um, so I, we were talking about you've seen Kingpin, right? When uh, um, it's been with, a long time. When, but his last name is Munson, and someone okay. casually says like, oh, you don't want to go down there, Munson. You're so, he's like, what is? You just said my last name. What does that mean? He's like, oh, you know, you get stranded down with like, you know, it's like up Shit's Creek without a paddle. He's like, oh, that's, that's his last name. So we want to try to start using Blauberg, like, like, Oof. and to get fucked over is to be Blauberged. Okay. So he wants it to spread so far that one day she's gonna be in a situation and then be like, oh, don't, don't rent an apartment in that building because the landlord will Blauberg you. Or is a real Blauberg. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't yeah. be such a fucking Blauberg. <laughs> Blauberg, that's my last name. What does that yeah. mean? It means to get fucked over. Right. So audience out there, 
Blauberg means to get fucked over or to be a mean person who accuses someone okay. of, of rape. <laughs> That's not so much a joke as it is. It's a good is. thing we're not live. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing, it was, it was a little bit strange. We're not alive right now. Um, Neve, you offered to take us uh, you, to Dunkin' Donuts to get us some donuts and coffee, <laughs> but you didn't tell me that you were going to order the subtotal from the menu. Right. No, he ordered the tax. Okay, the tax is easy. It's very cheap. The tax cheap. is simple. Right. But the tax right. max. You ever <laughs> notice that the tax is always 8% of the, of the mill, of the bill? Not always. Oh, so, so sometimes it's a little different. So maybe it's my not favorite an actual... type of food is Tax Max. <laughs> this is the, it's purely the, the IQ IRS. of this conversation yeah. is just it's subpar right now. It's yeah. below. Sub, Benny's retarded. Subtotal. Uh, <laughs> subtotal. Uh, you know who actually loves talking? You know, I had a joke. Loves, Wait, I had no, a joke. You know, who loves sub, <laughs> you know who doesn't love subpar conversation anymore? Tiger Woods. <laughs> not not golfing well. I had a joke I was going to use earlier when you said blogs are dead. I was going to ask, well, do all blogs go to heaven? <laughs> I missed one. it, but then I, no, I missed my window. But I felt like it still deserved. That's a good blog. That's a here. good tweet. That's a good blog. No, name. that's a good radio show name or all something. All blogs not go to heaven, blog. right? Like, and then Janine Garofalo masturbates in a bathtub. Oh, did that happen in that movie? Yeah, oh, I never. I don't even know if I saw that. Movie. I masturbated to that. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. I mean, any opportunity. Do you guys, do you guys still, you're married, Ben. Yes. Do you still jerk off? Um, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I'm, good, I'm curious. <laughs> it becomes a novelty when you get married, right? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a whole other thing. Because you're a young man yes. who's married. And I, does Who the, gets does, lots does of directions. This, well, I'm just curious, does that same kind of, because when, you know, when you grow up, Everyone always says, like, the best way to not get laid, get married. You know, as soon as you get married, sex, uh, your sex but life Sex dies. is free. It becomes free. Well, but my point is, like, guys are always talking about how they never get laid because their wife, whatever. Well, I'm that's, just curious. Well, that depends on the marriage. Obviously. <laughs> but, like, is it true? Like, do you, do you get, are you so satisfied now with your wife? That you never need to jerk off. Well, this is, I don't want you know if you feel like this could be offensive a, to her. I don't no, no, want it's, you. A, it's a very personal. It's a it's a personal. Well, we didn't come here. I know, to not I know. Get personal. I come is, here. <laughs> no, the thing is, is I came I, already. I um, I guess what you're trying to say. <laughs> just answer the question. Just answer the question. You, you beat your meat or not? <laughs> of course, everybody. Oh, has of to. course. But but I will say, don't knock it, sex with myself. No, yeah, it's the what is yeah. it, the person I love. Yeah. No, but the thing is, that now there's two people that you love. But <laughs> right. Yeah, you're left and the right. Yeah. It's um, yeah. I don't think that that uh, oh yeah. So it's all gone. It's all that is 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 uh, a valid. I'll be very right. candid about my master. Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, I candid. go through I go through binges. Sure. One, one day I'll wake up and I'll masturbate six or seven times. One really? Day. Yep. Uh, and then I'll go stretches with three, four weeks where I don't even, I don't touch a woman. But that I don't means touch myself that means except not, for when I piss. That means like not leaving your house all day. Uh, no, that's not true. Find a bathroom somewhere. Oh, uh, oh, so you'll you'll do like if on, I have to, like, yeah. on location. I'm I'm a moving. What's the what's moving. the most like absurd or public or like crazy place you've ever jerked off? Uh, well, there's a lot of public places, but really? I've been jerked off in a lot of public no, oh, places. Well, that's, that's very different. But that but is I've, interesting. I've done, I've jerked off in a museum. It, that's not that weird. In a bathroom. Mm. <laughs> no. No comment. In a gallery. In a gallery in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yeah. How? Uh, like, I, did, I did a lot of pre-gaming in my pants. Like you just and, were rubbing your. Yeah. Okay. And then. And then I, um, yeah, found a quiet area. <laughs> and took it out to do it or uh, half out half out why yeah. why were you so incensed that you had to in that I, moment I, because when because i go through these spells where i can go three four weeks without when having to you. even come I, right. I when i do it i just gotta I, i'm obsessive about things wow. so when i do it i got i i sure. spend the day with it you know i spend i take a really it's like focused. i go on vacation with myself basically right. okay and, <laughs> and my friend ratso actually just turned me on to a great porno site really yeah tube galore but I think okay. I mean, if we want to talk about this more, I think porn is dangerous for us, for guys, as guys. Why you say that? Only porn I, I'm interested in is amateur porn, homemade stuff. All right. Well, that's a little bit better. Yeah, I can't watch the produced stuff. So it's real just not people having real sex. I love seeing a couple have a camera set up. I love it. Okay. I think it's so erotic and hot and beautiful. Do you ever have you ever done it? Because you're a filmmaker who like <laughs> I mean, I've done it once. Okay. 
the tape doesn't exist anymore though. Hmm. It was a mini DV tape. Right. I, I don't. I'm not interested in. Yeah. I'm, I never want to see myself have sex. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, right? So it's, it's not something you want to. I turn into an animal. <laughs> Are you? I Are you turn into very an animal. aggressive. Yes, very aggressive. Hmm. For all the ladies out there, all the submissive types. You're into that. Hit me up. No, I like to dominate. Right. You. You're into submissive. No, I'm into girls. domination. You want to dominate. I want to dominate. So you want a girl who's submissive. Submissive, yes. Right. Okay. I think we're clear on that. Okay. <laughs> Let's uh, <laughs> maybe pause for a station. <laughs> <Yeah>. station. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to <laughs> Real Sex Radio. R-R-L. The river in real life. In real life. So I think we should start to wrap things up. Okay. Um, Did you bring wrapping paper? No. uh, I was talking more specifically about, you know, the cultural sort of reference of wrapping it up in regards to intercourse. (laughs) You should always wrap it up. (laughs) You guys don't speak the same. I know the lingo. I'm on the streets, guys. You are. I I mean, you're on the streets, too. I'm on the streets. That's true. Yeah, I'm on the streets. But I'm out there, like... In You're on the super I'm, highway. Yeah, I'm on. I'm in the strip malls of America, yeah. talking to people and getting the lingo, um, and wrap it up. That's something. I mean, that that's means not, put a condom on. <laughs> <laughs> Bag it up. Bag it up. Right. <laughs> wrap it up. Probably not even. I. I maybe I'm wrong. Um, but what? What should we sort of? How should we end this? Because you know, there's still lots to talk about. But we got. You know, we can't. Go it's on a shame forever. we didn't go into. Uh into uh, the situation we just kind of stepped out of the street onto because that was very interesting but we don't need to go into well, it's it a lot of backstory there's it's a lot of backstory but I thought it was interesting and it definitely you turned into because you've become this kind of you 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 you're very comfortable with kind of stepping in and telling people giving them advice and kind of being a feedback system for them and right. and that was interesting you did that for the listeners out there Neve did that with uh, one of the actors from our film who just got out of prison. He was just very ready to give him advice, and it wasn't, it wasn't like subjective, hard and you know speaking. Right. You weren't speaking at him. You were just kind of acting as yeah. a feedback system, like, "Hey, this is what you're saying. Do you understand what you're right. saying?" Right. Well, that's it was one... very pointed. That's what it was. It was, and like, he listened. Yeah, because yeah. it made sense. I mean, he listened a little bit more after the third person came up to you and asked for the Maybe. selfie. Yeah. But I think that that is something that I've become good at, which is, um, first of all, to get taking advice. You mm-hmm. know, because. I've certainly needed a lot of guidance and advice in my life, but learning that people have a sort of an expectation of themselves, and they have a, a, a sort of habit, and a, um, an ex- and they t- they tell themselves the same story, right? So like he just got out of jail, and he's used drugs before, and he's been with this girl before, and so he just keeps telling himself like, yeah, well, you know, she's my girl, and I can't leave her. And every time you say that. You convince yourself that like that's mm-hmm. what it is, <clears throat> and people just don't uh, understand because they've haven't had someone sometimes tell them like you don't have to do that. Stop saying that, and just start saying something new. Like go in a different, and, that, and that's usually the sometimes a really good access point to kind of get through to people. Is to just kind of show them what they're how they're acting in a weird way. Yeah, just just reflect back on them. Like I hear you saying this. Do you understand that? Like. Mm-hmm. You yeah, putting it out there for them. Right. Because it's like normally if you just say it and you hear it, but if somebody else says the same thing to you, you hear it differently. That's, right. Well, yeah. it's, right, it's the difference between trying to tell someone to do something or tell them that what they're doing is wrong mm-hmm. versus letting them realize for themselves that what they're doing isn't what they want. Well, that's the only way something's going to actually make Usually change, that's yeah. like a good way to do it. I, 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 Especially I someone like that. him who's who's probably used to getting people, having people tell him, like, don't do this, mm-hmm. don't do that. Yeah, he's been institution right. seven years of the past ten right. years, institutionalized. So, yeah, I, I, I use movies to do that. Right. I, I, I'm interested in something. I make a whole movie about it. Some And half of it's for me and half of it's for the subject. But I always learn something about, you know, you follow your intuition, you follow yeah, your interests. Yeah, you learn more by putting it out on the table and mess, looking at it. You know, How much have you learned over the past four years of doing, you know, your show? A lot. Yeah, based on just talking to people, you probably learned so much. Sure, for sure. I mean, and also over the last four years, I've been in my own relationship. I've seen a therapist. Like, I'm, I'm always looking for new, new ways to change and grow. I've never been able to see a therapist. I tried a couple times, never been able to do it. Well, 
So it's, not, you know, you got to, it's, it's just like a relationship. Yeah, it's, you very, gotta, you know. it's hard work, you know. But. Well, and also you got to look for the right one. Mm-hmm. Not every therapist is right for you. Yeah. But it is, it is the process of like, yeah, putting stuff out there. I got bed bugs from one of them. Really? Oh. <laughs> you're laying yes. on the couch and you come back, you're like, what the fuck? Head bugs. Actually, there's a great bed bug story. There was a uh, apartment it- I was living in. I was oh, trying to yeah. figure out. I had I had bites, and I was like, ah, I definitely have them. And I was trying to figure out where they came from. And I w- saw my neighbor coming up, Chinese woman, didn't speak English, and her and she was scratching the baby. She had an like, infant that had bites all over the oh. baby, and she was scratching. I thought it was very strange. She was scratching her baby for her. How did she know? <clears throat> the she baby kn- was itchy. Yeah, the baby yeah. didn't ex- say I'm itchy. Barely could, I couldn't talk. It was an infant. So she just knew hmm. maybe the kid was, like, trying to scratch. I mean, that must be painful to be an in. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Stra- strange. Anyway, so Benny know. was trying to come up to them, and we <laughs> tried learning how to say in Chinese, do you have bed bugs? <laughs> and we couldn't. And the, the word bed bug is very similar to, right. to the word penis. To the word penis, no. yes. Uh, hopefully Chinese listeners out there don't think we're idiots. Can't, so let's hear it. Um, I, think she, it's, I think it's Chow Tzu. Chow Chung is what I thought. Chow Chung. Uh, anyway, so we couldn't get it, it also, right. So, wait, but Benny re- downloaded re- this app on his phone. This is so millennial. He uh, that you can Google Translate that you can speak into, oh, wow. and it translates it for you. So we went up to these people, the, these neighbors of mine, who I've seen every single day, and I would take out the garbage for them. And Benny goes up to them with his phone, and he goes, "Excuse me," and they stop at him, and he looks and he talks into his phone. He says, "Do you have bed bugs?" And then he shows them the Chinese yeah. translation, and then he hits talk, and it goes. Yes. And, and it says, "Yeah, Neo Chong Chong." And they were they didn't answer the question. They thought that they were in a Twilight Zone episode. That this man from the future was showing. They couldn't oh believe that someone was holding. They could not believe it. Wow. They were just staring at his phone in amazement. And then he repeated it, and they said, "Yes." And wow. then I had a horrible, my bed had a bunch of them on there. So I was like, oh, I didn't have them before. So I just thought you throw the mattress away. I had oh. a shitty Ikea mattress. Right. So I just threw them away. And they saw me throwing the mattress oh, out. Oh, boy. And they're like, millionaire white man. Yeah, how can right. you throw Throwing it? the mattress away. And they, said, and they said something so poignant. They said, they said you throwing it away just because a little tiny bug? <laughs> and I was like, they're so right. I'm a human. I'm a million times the size of a bed bug. And I'm afraid of it. And it's making me crazy. And I'm throwing my bed away. It cost me $100. I'm throwing my bed away. Well, what else are you going to do? I mean, you, you can, can live you with them. With yeah, you, could, you, could rely, you could get rid of them, but they'll come back. I, will, I do need to admit that um, that was my fault. The, uh, the bed bugs and penis do not sound similar in oh. Chinese. Just, that was the first thing I looked up when I downloaded the app. Was, oh. <laughs> you say penis and Chinese. Benny's five years old forever, which so, is beautiful. So I looked that up, and I myself... <laughs> Confused the two words. Ah, so by action, I said "niao yingjing," which is oh. "you have a penis," <laughs> as opposed to "do you have bed bugs?" Is "do you I'm have sorry. a penis?" Niao jingjong, yingjing, yingjing. Right. Got it. I believe. Jingjong, yingjing, yingjing, yingjing. <laughs> the politically, the political correct police Dirty are Jew. listening to this. Dirty Jew, right? Uh, Hi, Jing Jing. <laughs> oh, is there? Dirty J- <laughs> Dirty Jew. <laughs> What no, this is, no, now this is the finalize of the joke. Just happened. So it's knock knock. Who's there? Dirtage. Dirtage who? Excuse me? <laughs> Did you just call me a dirty Jew? Oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's it. Dirtage who? Yeah, we got it. That's it. It's great. I did, it's, it's fully there. The response would then be like, this is Adolf Hitler's house. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> is Adolf home? Yeah. <laughs> Adolf. Adolf who? Adolf. Rudolph. Adolf who? R- Rudolph. Uh, Adolf Rudolph who? Anyway, um, well, this has been great. This was fun. <laughs> this was really fun. Yeah. So go, go online and watch the trailer for Heaven Knows What. Exactly. And then they share just search it with for Heaven Knows Heaven What. Heaven Knows What on YouTube. Got it. Uh, and it will be coming out uh, from Radius Weinstein Company. And if this people want to find you and follow you, at on Twitter we go. We use the same handle same brain we don't uh right. delineate who's saying what and it's at josh underscore benny and on instagram i go by booger nose <laughs> <laughs> booger underscore nose and, and I, I take pictures of uh, strangers yeah. and moments that i, I like reflect. your instagram post because you 
take a picture of something, somebody, and then you quote one yeah. thing that they must have said to you or Some, that you yeah. overheard, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes it's, I mix it up. You sometimes tell it's little real. stories. Yeah, oh, you make that up sometimes? Sometimes <laughs> I do, yeah. Oh. I have a good, a fun time because sometimes to get their language right, right is, is right. tough. And then when I go overseas sure. for a festival, it's like I'll take right. a picture of something and I'll just look up, <laughs> I'll think of what they're right. saying and I'll just look it up and I'll just quote, do Got a it. quote in Italian or something. Sure. And, and ben, Benny takes pick. He's yeah. at at bow tie, B O W, like a bow tie. Right. But it's bowed. And he takes oh, wait, pictures sorry, so of. Just, just to be clear, so you're at bowed tie. tie. Yes. Got it. Um, and he takes pictures of what I like to call alien formations on this planet. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's. Uh, Beautiful square photographs. Inst basically, Benny was taking medium sure. format photographs way before Instagram, and then. This became kind of the I, that became the popular format, yeah, which is so strange. strange. I only take I was, photos in square mode. Well, that's really, the, the only I was that's all I I was. I never do it. I, I never. It never meant anything to me, and I never. Do, I tried doing square photos in the beginning right. of Instagram. That's, just that's what I've it. been doing for like ten years, right. and then it's like okay, now everybody's taking them. So it's just funny that I like when I get a roll of film developed, it's all yeah. squares. Oh yeah. So it's like I can actually. It's like a, a physical Instagram feed, which actually kind of makes it a little bit. It lessens it a little bit because like each it's, picture is supposed to I wonder to be. why it, the square format became the format that became ubiquitous. Well, I think it's because the phone is vertical. Well, no, but they square, could still be vertical. Yeah, yeah rectangles. but, but, they, but it, it, Twitter it, still does. Either way, it's the same format, you know? But it could it's also a, have been rectangle. I, mean, I see what Benny's less, saying. Benny's you know, saying like orientation, orientation wise, it won't same. change where you have the. But Instagram doesn't even let you hold your phone horizontally. I but know. It, but if it's a square, it it'd be cool if it did and you could just scroll this way through your feed. That would be really cool. Except. Because my Comments. thumbs get tired and sore from like True. this. Uh -huh. It's it's all it's, it's actually the perfect um, aspect ratio for a phone right. or something like that. I right. Don't know. But anyway, anyway, you could follow us on those on those platforms and uh, you know. Does it hit me up on? Uh, what is there? So there, you could say hit me up on Instagram or hit me up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Tag me on Instagram. There's like a specific mm -hmm. language there mm -hmm. too, but. We don't. I don't know. So That's yeah, cool. we, wrap we, it up. We we will be amount announcing uh, you know information about how you can see more of our movies. Oh, and we also have a small museum that uh, That's right. that we created that Alex Commons now the director of and uh, the world's smallest museum. The world's mm -hmm. smallest museum on Cortland Alley in Manhattan, uh, between Franklin and White Street. And it's called a museum. It's called Museum with four M's. Right. Mu M Museum M Museum. Right. And uh, the new season opens this spring. And it's free and open to the public on weekends and viewable and accessible 24-7 via a, like, viewing windows and a 1-800 number, which acts as the kind of audio guide. The 1-800 number and, is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of fun with that. Well, actually, it was insane because we were trying to come up with an audio guide, and we tried to steal a system from, like, the Guggenheim or something like sure. that, and then that became impossible. So we ended up, I ended up coming up with this idea. I was like, wait a second. When you call a major corporation, there's so many extensions. different extensions, yes, right. and we could just make every one of those extensions an a, outgoing message. An outgoing yes. message that right. you can't leave a message. Basically, for. there's like a hundred employees right. that have voicemails that you're not allowed to leave voicemails. Right. And we always get this kind of ominous British, all-knowing. If you say that's anything great. with the British accent, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's and, and I have a you, piece there. You have that's a piece right. there. I have a piece in the permanent collection at museum, and it's a it's one of our Pretty favorite incredible. pieces. Is it, it really? gets photographed yeah. a lot. Yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, cool. It's, 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 it's legendary. It's great. Yeah, it's a sucker from the <laughs> Natural right. History Museum's uh, Squid and the Whale. That's right. It's a very cool piece. All right, so I think this is a good time to sign off. Sign and off. I'm very excited for the audience to hear our brand new uh, wrap-up music uh, sign-off. So um, when you guys are ready... In real life. 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 This is the proper outro. In real life. The river. <laughs> that was very NPR. Yeah. That was nice. Welcome back. 
to cereal. <laughs> On this week's episode, we'll talk to Dirtage, a young Jew. <laughs> Imprisoned unlawfully <laughs> after knocking on the wrong guy's door. <laughs> yeah. So, Dirtage, what hap- What happened when, when, <laughs> Dirtage, when you knocked on the door? How come there was a fight that you had to? <laughs> Sorry, the, the the rabbi's son, Dirtage, who go, was always getting in fights. Yeah, it's just no. He 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 lives in a, he lives in a predominantly um. Hasidic neighborhood, and it's a shame for him because whenever the whenever the, the door gets knocked, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we gotta go, guys. All right, thanks for coming on IRL. Don't forget. <laughs> Tune in next week for all the episodes. Thank episode. you for having us, Neve. <laughs> Thank you. And if you like these guys, you'll like their movie. It's called Heaven Knows What. Check it out in theaters this summer. <laughs> all right. All right. Later. Later. Bye. Bye.